Mokansia belongs to division Bryophyta, class Hepaticopsida, order Mokansiales, family Mokansiaceae, and genus Mokansia. Mokansia has been named in the honor of Nicholas Merchant, the then director of the botanical garden of Gaston de Orleans in Blois, France. The genus is distributed all over the world. It includes about 65 species, 11 of which are reported from India. The species occur in dense green patches in the moist, cold and shady terrestrial habitats. In India, it occurs mostly in the hills on forest floor, shaded cliffs, tree trunks or the muddy bank of water courses. Mokansia polymorpha is the most common species reported from Himalayan mountains, South Indian hills and plains. It grows abundantly to 4572 meters. Mokansia palmata grows at an altitude of 2438 meters in Himalayas and South Indian hills. However, it is commonly found in Kashmir and Punjab. The other common species of India are Mokansia nepalensis, Mokansia indica and Mokansia similana. Plants bearing sex organs are found in the months of February and March in the Himalayas and October and November in South Indian hills. The plant body of Mokansia is a haploid gametophyte, usually called as thallus because it lacks true roots, stem and leaves. External structure, the gametophytic plant body is green, prostrate, dorsiventral and dichotomously branched. Each branch has an apical notch with a growing point at its base. The mature thallus is 2 to 10 centimeters in length and 0 0.5 to 3 centimeters in breadth. Now dorsal surface of the thallus. The dorsal surface of the thallus is dark green with a broad dark and median thickening called midrib which is marked as a shallow groove. It is marked into polygonal or rhomboidal areas called areoles or areoli. These indicate the outline of underlying air chambers. In the center of each areole lies an air pore which connects the air chamber with the external environment. There are small cup-like structures present along the midrib. They are called gemma cups. The gemma cups bear jemmy which help in vegetative multiplication. In the adult gametophyte, the dorsal surface bears certain upright branches near the apical notches known as gametophores, which bear sex organs. Now, ventral surface of the thallus. The ventral surface of the thallus along the midrib is marked by a median longitudinal groove. On both sides of this groove arise numerous rhizoids and scales. The rhizoids are colorless or pale brown unicellular unbranched tubular outgrowths. They are of two types, smooth walled and tuberculate. The smooth walled rhizoids are comparatively broader with smooth thin walls. They help in fixation and absorption of water and minerals from the soil. The tuberculate rhizoids originate beneath the scales and converge towards the midrib. They are narrow and have comparatively thick walls. From the inner walls of these rhizoids develop many peg-like outgrowths or tuber cells which project towards their lumen. Tuberculate rhizoids run horizontally along the underside of the thallus to form a capillary conducting system. 
thereby helping conduction of water to all the absorptive areas of the thalus. The scales are arranged in two to four rows on each side of the midrib. In Mokansia polymorpha, there are three rows of scales which are respectively known as median, laminar and marginal rows. The median scales are also called appendiculate. They are large and wedge shaped in outline. The median scale has three parts, body, neck and appendage. The outer scales that is marginal and laminar ones are simple or legulate, tongue shaped without any appendage. Each scale is multicellular, membranous, palate like and one cell thick. They are purplish in color because of the presence of enthocyanin. Oil cells are also present in the scales. The marginal scales possess mucilage papillae. Mucilage protects the cells from desiccation. The scales retain moisture and transport water by capillarity. Now internal structure of the thallus. When viewed in a vertical section, the thallus shows a high degree of internal differentiation of internal tissues, many layered thick in the middle and a few layered towards the margins. The cells are arranged in three different regions. These are epidermal region, photosynthetic region and storage region. Now epidermal region, the thallus has a well defined upper and lower epidermis. The upper epidermis covers the thallus over the dorsal surface. It is single layered, sometimes two layered, for example in Mokansia indica. It consists of thin walled cells which contain a few discoid chloroplasts. The outer walls of these cells are cutinized and slightly thickened. The epidermis is interrupted by many barrel shaped air pores one on the roof of each air chamber. Each air pore is surrounded by 16 to 40 cells having cutinized walls and a few chloroplasts. These cells are arranged in four to eight superimposed ringed tires one above the another. Each tire consists of four to five cells. They are arranged in the form of small chimney which encloses a wide passage which is broad in middle and narrow above and below. The pore wall lies half below the epidermis and therefore opening the pore in slightly raised above the surface of the thallus. Now photosynthetic region just beneath the upper epidermis there is single horizontal row of air chambers separated from each other by a single layered partition wall with two to four cells in height. Each chamber opens out through a chimney like or barrel shaped air pore. The air chambers are hexagonal in surface view and look rectangular in vertical section. A large number of short, simple and branched filaments of green cells arise from the floor of each chamber. These are called photosynthetic or assimilatory filaments. The cells of the assimilatory filaments, partition walls and floor of the air chamber contain numerous disc shaped chloroplasts. The chambered region is therefore the principal center of photosynthesis in the thallus. Now storage region, this zone lies on the ventral side of the thallus. It is the thickest in the center and gradually becomes thin towards the margins. The tissue consists of compactly arranged parenchymates and isodiametric cells rich in starch and proteins. Intercellular spaces are absent. A few cells are filled with mucilage or oil bodies. Some cells of the storage region possess reticulate and pitted thickenings. They are called sacleroids. 
in some species, central part of the midrib region contains elongated mucilage tubes which prevent the cells from desiccation. The storage region on the ventral side is covered by lower epidermis which is made of non-green quadrate cells. From the lower epidermis arise rhizoids and scales. The students Mokansia reproduces by vegetative and sexual means. Vegetative reproduction, the vegetative reproduction takes place by many ways such as fragmentation, regeneration, formation of adventitious branches and formation of jummy. Now fragmentation, this is the most common method of reproduction in Mokansia as a result of aging of mature cells of posterior region of the thallus, they die and disintegrate. When the decaying of the cells reaches the dichotomy, each lobe of the thallus gets separated. Each lobe by the apical growth develops into an independent plant and results in a rapid increase of the thallus. Regeneration, any separated or severe plant part can regenerate into the whole plant if conditions are favorable. Formation of adventitious branches, under favorable conditions the thallus gives rise to adventitious branches. These branches usually develop from the ventral surface of the thallus, though they may also develop from any part of the thallus. These branches on separation due to decay of the connect connecting tissue develop into new thalli. Now, a sexual reproduction by Jimmy. An interesting and special method of vegetative reproduction occurs by special reproductive bodies known as Jimmy. In Mokansia, Jima are produced in autumn and spring inside small Jima cups on the dorsal surface in the midrib region. These Jima cups in the beginning appear as circular areas a short distance behind the apical cell, but on account of the upward growth of the adjoining vegetative tissue, they soon become hollow cavities. Now development of Jima, a small area appears in the form of the depression near the growing point on the dorsal surface of the thallus which differentiates into a jima cup. The jummy originate from the epidermal cells lining the floor of the cupule. One of the epidermal cell gives rise a papilla like outgrowth and functions as a jima initial. It divides by transverse divisions to form a basal cell a stalk cell and a primary body cell. The stalk cell does not divide further and functions as a single cell stalk of the mature jima. The primary cell of the jima divides by a series of transverse divisions to form a filament of four to five cells. This is followed by a series of vertical and horizontal divisions to form the body of the mature jima. At first, the jima is only one cell in thickness, but due to periclinal divisions of central cells, it becomes several cells thick in the center, and as a result, the jima becomes disc shaped. Now, structure of a mature jima each jima consists of a multicellular green body and a unicellular hyaline stalk with which it is attached to the base of the jima cup. The body of the jima is elliptical and flattened like a double convex lens. The jima is four to five cells thick towards the middle and gradually thins out to become single layered towards the margins. The margin bears two shallow lateral and opposite notches, growing points are situated in these notches. The jummy of some species can have three or 
four growing points. Most of the cells of jummy are clone chymates. However, a few individual cells just below the margin may possess oil bodies instead of chloroplasts. They are called oil cells. On the dorsal surface of the gemma are scattered some larger colorless cells with denser granular cytoplasm. These are called rhizoidal cells because they can produce rhizoids after falling on the moist substratum. The gemma may also possess few mucilage cells for retaining moisture. At the base of the gemma, there is another notch where the hyaline stalk is attached. The cells bordering this notch have very weak cells. The mature gemma breaks its connection from the stalk cell in many ways. Number one, due to raindrop splash, due to the pressure of the young growing jummy, due to the swelling of the mucilage hairs and number four, due to the water tension created in the gemma cup by the secretion of mucilage hairs. Now germination of the gemma. The young jummy get released after breaking off the single cell stalks. Raindrops may carry the jummy up to a distance of 1 meter and are further carried away by water currents and animals. The jummy germinate as soon as they get a suitable substratum. One or both of the growing points become active. The surface of the gemma which comes in contact with the substratum becomes the ventral surface and that which remains exposed becomes the dorsal surface. The upper surface develops air chambers and from the lower surface develop rhizoids which penetrate into the soil and start water absorption. Both the growing points become active and two thalli are produced in opposite directions by death and decay of the middle portion of the gemma. The gemma produced on the male thallus gives rise to male thalli, while as those produced from the female ones they develop into the female thalli. Mokansia is a dioecious that is the male and female sex organs develop on separate thalli. The male sex organs are called anthridia and the female sex organs are called orchigonia. Sexual reproduction is oogamous. The sex organs are born on upright branches called receptacles or gametophores. The gametophore bearing anthridium is called anthridiophore and that bearing orchigonia is called orchigoniophore. Sex organs are usually produced during winter to spring in India, mostly in the months of April or May and only once in a year. The reproduction of sex organs is controlled by high humidity, low nitrogen, high carbonate content and long photoperiods. Abnormal bisexual receptacles known as androgynous receptacles have also been reported by several workers in many species of Mokansia. However, these abnormalities are considered to be of great phylogenetic importance, denoting reversion to the monoecious conditions. The reproductive branches grow vertical and become differentiated into a stalk and a terminal horizontal disc which is eight lobed. Now, in 3D4, the anthridiophore consists of a narrow stalk and a disc shaped male receptacle. The stalk is 1 to 3 centimeters long, more or less cylindrical, bears 1 to 2 grooves, and has scales and tuberculate rhizoids. The male receptacle is commonly 8 lobed, however, 4 lobed receptacles are also occasionally present. Each lobe has a growing point at its tip. 
the male receptacle is slightly concave on the upper side and convex on the lower side. Internal structure of the receptacle resembles with that of the thallus. It has an upper photosynthetic region and a lower storage region. Photosynthetic region consists of an upper epidermis having air pores which open into air chambers having assimilatory filaments. Now development of anthridium. The anthridium develops after repeated cell divisions from a single superficial cell called anthridial in shell which is situated on the dorsal surface of the anthridial receptacle. The anthridial in shell divides into two cells by a transverse division giving rise to an outer cell and a basal cell. The basal cell remains embedded in the thallus and develops into the embedded portion of the anthridial stalk. The outer cell after successive transverse divisions forms a filament of four cells. The two upper cells are the primary anthridial cells and the two lower cells are the primary stalk cells. The primary stalk cells divide to form a two celled thick stalk whereas the two primary anthridial cells divide by two successive vertical divisions at right angles to each other to form two tiers of four cells each. A periclinal division of both the tiers of cells result in the formation of outer jacket cells and inner endrogonial cells. The jacket cells divide anticlinally and form a single layered jacket whereas the endrogonial cells divide in all possible directions to form a mass of endrocyte mother cells. Each endrocyte mother cell divides diagonally to form two triangular cells which metamorphose into two enthrozoites. Each enthrozoite is a long slightly coiled structure with two flagella at its interior end. The anthridium is globular in outline and is attached to the base of the anthridial chamber by means of a short but multicellular stalk. It is covered by a single layered jacket made of thin walled cells. Each anthridium encloses a large number of endrocytes. Now dehiscence of anthridium, the anthridia dehisce in presence of water which percolates through a narrow canal into the anthridial cavity. Water results in the disintegration of the steroidal jacket cells and leads to the rupture of anthridium. The anthrozoites ooze out through an opening and come to lie on the surface of the disc where from they swim in a film of water. Now orchigoniophore or the female sexual branch. The female sexual branch called orchigoniophore or corpocephalum develops at the apical notch of the thallus. It consists of a stalk and a lobe disc or a female receptacle. It is slightly longer than anthridiophore and attains a height of about 2 to 3 inches. The female disc is 8 lobed. In many species of Morkansia, they develop finger like projections called rays, usually 9 in number, which give the young receptacle an umbrella shape and the mature receptacle a star like appearance. Between the rays, a group of orchigonia are arranged in radial rows. Each row bears 12 to 18 orchigonia arranged in an acropetal succession. That is, younger orchigonia are arranged towards the margins and the mature ones towards the center of the disc. At this stage, fertilization occurs. After fertilization, the stalk begins to elongate and the central portion of the disc bulges out and pushing the orchigonia at the periphery. The bulging of disc continues till the radiating rows of orchigonia become completely inverted. Consequently, the acropital succession is reversed to centrifugal arrangement.
that is youngest orchigonia lie towards the stalk and the oldest towards periphery. The inversion of the orchigonia is accompanied by the development of two curtains like in volucors called perichetia. The orchigonium develops from orchigonial initial which is situated near growing point on the dorsal surface of the thallus. The orchigonial initial divides by a transverse wall forming a basal cell and an outer cell. The basal cell divides a few times and remains as embedded portion of the orchigonium which may develop into a short stalk. The outer cell divides by three intersecting vertical walls and gives rise a central primary axial cell surrounded by three peripheral initials. Each peripheral initial divides vertically give rise five to six jacket initials which surround the primary axial cell. The jacket initials divide by transverse division to form two tires of six cells each. The cells of upper tire are called neck initials which divide transversely to form six vertical rows of six to nine cells which constitute the neck of mature orchigonia. The cells of lower tire called winter initials divide and redivide to form the winter of the orchigonium. The base of the neck and the winter becomes two celled thick prior to fertilization by periclinal cell division. The primary axial cell divides transversely to form upper primary cover cell and lower central cell. The primary cover cell divides by two vertical divisions and results in the formation of four cover cells. The lower central cell divides transversely and forms a primary neck canal cell and a primary ventral cell. The primary neck canal cell divides and redivides to give rise four to six neck canal cells. However, different workers have shown variable number of neck canal cells. The ventral cell divides by transverse division into upper ventral cell and lower large egg cell. Now, structure of mature orchigonia. A mature orchigonium is a flask shaped structure attached to the lobe of the receptacle by means of short and multicellular stalk. It is covered by a single layered collar like covering called perigynium. The stalk is followed by a dilated winter and a long neck. Both the neck and winter are bounded by single layer of sterile cells. These cells are arranged irregularly in the wall of the winter, but in the neck they are arranged in the six longitudinal rows. The neck is closed by four lid cells and encloses four to six neck and all cells. The winter contains a large naked egg or osphere and a ventral canal cell. Now, fertilization. Water and nearness between male and female plants is a prerequisite for fertilization. Water is needed for dehiscence of anthridia, liberation of anthrozoids, opening of orchigonial neck and transportation of spermatozoids from anthridiophore to orchigonial neck. Besides, mites may also help in the transport of spermatozoids from anthridia to orchigonia. Some proteins and potassium salts are responsible for the attraction of spermatozoids to the interior of orchigonia. Once fusion of spermatozoid and osphere occurs, it results in the development of a diploid zygote. The zygote develops a wall around it and is called oospore. Soon after fertilization, the orchigonia starts elongation and undergoes some post fertilization change. The 
the zygote is the first cell of the sporophytic generation. It divides and produces a mass of undifferentiated cells, which later on get transformed into sporogonium or sporophyte. And development of sporogonium, the zygote divides by a transverse wall into an upper epibasal and an inner hypobasal cell. The hypobasal cell functions as hostorium. However, some workers are of the opinion that it also undergoes a few divisions. The epibasal cell gives rise the mature sporogonium that is foot, seta and capsule are derived from it. The first division is vertical followed by a transverse division to form four cells. These four cells again divide by vertical walls, so that two tiers of four cells are formed. The upper four cells give rise to capsule, whereas the lower cells by division and redivision form the foot and seta. The cells of upper tier divide periclinally and result in the separation of central endothecium from the peripheral single layered amphithecium. The amphithecium cells divide and redivide by anticlinal divisions to form single layered jacket of mature capsule. The endothecium forms orchisporium. The orchisporial cells after repeated cell divisions give rise to a mass of sporogenous tissue. About half of the sporogenous cells divide transversely to form vertical rows of more or less cubical spore mother cells. The remaining sporogenous cells become sterile and form long cylindrical cells tapering at both ends. These are called letters. They are hygroscopic and perform twisting moments which result in the loosening of spore mass and thereby help in the dispersal of spores. The sporogonium is differentiated into three parts namely foot, seta and capsule. Foot is the basal bulbous structure made up of parenchymatous tissue and is embedded in the base of the orchigonium. Besides anchoring the sporogonium with the orchigoniophore, it helps in the absorption of water and nutrients from the gametophyte. The seta, it is short and thick portion of young sporogonium, although it helps as a conducting tissue, but at maturity it elongates and helps in pushing the capsule out through calyptra, perigynium and perichetium. Capsule, it is an oval structure at the distal end of the sporogonium. It has a single layer jacket enclosing mass of spores and letters, spores or the lost cells of the sporophytic generation. Now, dehiscence of capsule, when the spores mature, the capsule breaks through the calyptraws, pseudoparianth and perichetium by the sudden elongation of seta. After the capsule gets exposed to the external atmosphere, its wall separates longitudinally to form four to six valves or lobes exposing the mass of spores. The spore dispersal is facilitated by the hygroscopic movement of letters. The spores are then carried out by air currents. Now, young gametophyte. The spores, they are very small in size, ranging between 12 to 13 microns in size. Each spore is spherical and consists of a spore coat differentiated into outer thick exine and inner thin in time. Now, spore germination. Each spore mother cell forms four spores, which after falling on a suitable substratum form two male thalli and two female thalli. The cytoplasm 
of the spore absorbs water and swells up, the exine breaks and the protoplast divides into two cells. One of the cells elongates and forms a germ rhizoid. The other cell is green and results in the formation of small filament. Some cells of the filament divide in different plants and produce a plate-like young gametophyte. Some of the marginal cells become active and give rise to growing points. Further growth occurs from the growing points to give rise a young gametophytic thallus. The life cycle of Mokansia is represented by morphologically and physiologically two different generations. The plant body is a thallus gametophyte with all its cells having haploid number of chromosomes. The plant body can reproduce vegetatively under favorable conditions. Plant body produces haploid gametes in multicellular sex organs. The gametes after fertilization inside the archegonium give rise to a diploid zygote or oospore. It is the first cell of the sporophytic generation. The oospore grows to form a sporogonium which remains dependent on the gametophyte for its nutrition. In the capsule, the sporogonium are produced haploid spores which are formed by meiosis from spore mother cells. Spores are the first cells of the gametophytic generation. Each spore germinates to form a gametophytic thallus. In this way, the life cycle of Mokansia shows alternation of a haploid and a diploid generation. The two generations being dissimilar in morphology, therefore, the alternation of generation is said to be heteromorphic in Mokansia.